for me, my advocacy this week is really, let's start from the absence of dissent. It's often taken as acquiescence. So my big question today is, is science the new religion? Long before the evil of the pandemic hit the world, we've been assailed by narratives about the importance of science and the seeming disregard or relegation of, this very, of the importance of science by some world leaders, especially the recent ones in 2015. They seem to have come caught from the same mold. Arguments have been marshaled in support of the necessity for world leaders to trust more in science and technology. And we've become witnesses to the value of science and technology in driving development across the globe. There's no, there's no lie about that. There's abundant evidence that humanity has made vital progress because of science. And surely the world would have been a much crueler, darker place without the benefits or the reliance on scientific discoveries, which has boosted things like agriculture, transport, industry, defense, and more importantly, our health and medical sciences. The fact that we can tie the growth of nations to how advanced they are in science and technology is a good example, reflection of that. However, I would like to touch on the worrying narrative, which I guess COVID-19 has helped to uncover or rather damage this illusion about science, which is that science and technology is a solution of all problems. And we have begun to see Indeed, we have elevated science to the status of a religion with its own high priests and miracle working pastors. WHO, for example, must know it all simply because they are the World Health Organization. Elon Musk, the spaceman, the mass man, the savior of mankind, is going to take all of us to Mars. Everything NASA says must be an unquestionable fact. Well, we know this is simply not true. I'm not pursuing some type of relativism here. I'm just saying that history has proven to us that just as religion can be wrong and even cause more damage, science can equally be wrong too, can be misinterpreted, can be weaponized, can be bought and influenced by state and non-state actors. And indeed, science is not a repl replacement for humanity, for our humanity, or indeed for, for God, for those who believe in God. That being said, the beauty of good science is that it allows itself to be questioned, criticized, and peer-reviewed. Any good scientist knows that his work, no matter how great or groundbreaking or consequential, can always be questioned and improved upon. Because we are humans and because we evolve, and our knowledge about what we know and most importantly what we don't even know grows. With COVID-19, we've been witnesses to roller coaster of different reports about the virus, how it spreads, what can be used to treat it and avoid it. Despite all of this glorious attention humanity has paid to technology, Almost six months later, we do not yet have a clear, clear solution as to why or how this, this awful disease ravages people's countries and so on. We are discovering every new time that the simple things of nature we often ignored in the past are now even more important in protecting us and helping us to get through this period. Herbs, roots, vegetables, laughter, the sun, the love of family and friends, and ensuring that we all become stronger together. So beyond science and religion, I think the most important thing is the recognition that our humanity trumps everything. That science or technology, or indeed religion, can sow division or seek to plunder and be weaponized. It will not save us. Our humanity will save humanity. You know, like um, our the Germans humanity say, will save humanity. Um, humanity, yeah. God and humanity for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 uh, and then I, I like the fact, you know, that you remind people that humanity will save humanity. And this brings me back to Africa again, you know. Um, in this um, COVID-19, a lot of people had thought that um, Africa would, um, when it gets to Africa, Africans would be dropping dead like... Um, oh, they were anticipating you know, that. And then, and then now not that's not happening and it won't happen. It won't. Yeah, not because we are so godly yeah. no. or so religious, but because of those little things that you pointed out, humanity. Roots, herbs. And then those, you know, natural things that we take for granted. And you find out that, you know, we share love, family, who together, and in spite of the fact of social distancing, you still see people Laughter, come together, you know, you know share mm, jokes, yeah. and um, you know. So all of this, for me, I think is what's saving us more. If you like, you also said um, the World Health Organization would come with different, you know, diagnoses. At some point, it was that, oh no, you're not this. You don't even don't need a ventilator to treat, <laughs> you know, COVID-19 patient. You know, so all of that, but in all of this, most of the patients in Africa, in Nigeria, 
I've never heard of one being used. I've never heard of a ventilator being used to treat patients here. <laughs> but yet we're treating people. Yeah. And, and so that's why for us, if we have a little bit of humanity in everything that we do, I will not steal money that is meant to develop mm -hmm. you know, the society. I will not steal money that is meant to build schools. I will not make promises I can't keep. I will also not go into government because I want to enhance my personal pocket. I will not rape you know, another that. person. Mean. So that's why in all of this, whatever we say, science is good, it's fantastic, it has its own shortcoming, but humanity will save humanity to round up with what Humanity you trumps everything. I'll never uh, forget that phrase. And if you have respect for humanity, you won't go shooting at a hapless yeah. Yeah. teenager, pre-teenager. You yeah. won't go raping and justifying rape of another human being. What I thought COVID-19 would have done for us was to have restored our humanity, our lost humanity, because we're all running the rat race. Mm. But look at where we are. I hope and pray that indeed humanity will save humanity moving forward post-COVID. Yeah, um, Seydu, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I want to add something. Yeah. Um, Emeka's... Uh, advocacy today is very interesting i'm a scientist so i can relate with engineer the, uh, can you hear me <laughs> yes yes yeah. absolutely shoot shoot so i can i can relate with his submission however science what there's there's a little confusion here science does not it's not an answer it it, it, it has not the creed that has answer to everything what science does basically is to uh give you that inquisitive mind to question things Right today, we've been battling with cancer. We've not found uh, the solution to cancer, HIV. But does it mean research is not ongoing? It's still ongoing. What science does basically is just for you to question things. Once upon a time, the world thought eventually that that uh, position was disproved until somebody proved that Earth was 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 spherical. So science is continuous knowledge. There's a body of knowledge that you continue to add to. Now, relating it to uh, COVID, COVID is a new situation for science. It took everybody by storm. Now, you may want to ask that those uh, herbalists and the little people that we look down on, to me, they're scientists as well. People that question things, that want to prefer solutions, they're in their way. But what we're saying is they have to be regulated. Right. So, yes. And my religion tells me to be inquisitive. So there is like a fine, there's a fine divide between religion and science. Mm -hmm. My religion so is so humanity. Seek knowledge. Knowledge is science. Knowledge is power. Excuse me? Tie it to humanity. So that let, let, let's of time. go to Ruke. Let's go to Ruke. Okay, okay, so let me power. tell you what we'll I seek feel knowledge. About this. science. For sure. So then, and Emeka's question speaks to is science your new religion? And the answer is absolutely not. Science can never be a religion because science is just different people collecting facts together and making theories and then proving the theories. The lucky thing about this coronavirus, um, COVID-19, it started in Wuhan, China, and it spread all over the world. And to be honest, I think there's something a bit mysterious, probably suspicious about this, because first of all, China didn't tell us how this virus really started. And then they never really told us how to treat the virus. We've had to figure it out ourselves after hundreds and thousands of people have died. But like you said, science, science is science. It's not for one person. It's the same science all over the world. The same science of what Einstein started is the same science of today. Science is perfect. There's no error in science. So all of there us is, can be scientists. There, and there are, there are. Going back to this. If there are no can, error, there won't be improvement like this. on it. This lockdown, all these things, we have to find answers to this coronavirus and we know there are answers to every single virus and it will come to end it come to pass that this virus even this deadly virus will have its own lifespan so yeah, um, what i want to end is that there is hope people don't is not absolute. Will end up having real hugs not Seiju. virtual hugs say yeah. you were saying something yes i said science is not absolute it's not it perfect it's not absolute it's okay. involved okay. we keep what getting better well, what Emeka is basically now. saying is, uh, I, I, Emeka is here, I don't want to speak to him, but what I understand from Emeka's advocacy yeah. is a question, is science the new God? He talked about the role science plays, but 
in all of that, humanity is the new Trump. world. Fantastic. Okay, so we need to go. Um, so <laughs> thank you very much. I, you know, because this is it's a question I'm asking, and I, hopefully, when we when 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 viewers, when you guys watch this, you might have your own perspective. So I'm not going to weigh in more more than I've already said. I've said it in my in my in my advocacy. So I have no doubt that we have ignited some fires um, on this edition. Uh, like as I said, feel free to continue the conversation on our social media platforms on Facebook Plus TV Africa. Um, hashtag the advocate NG or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, um, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up on previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please, please, uh, Plus TV Africa. Till next time, we'll be dropping challenging and stirring issues for your engagement and consideration. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Thank you. And from all of us, um, say no. Say no to rape. Say no to rape. Say no to Thank you, guys. The violence of black lives actually do matter. Absolutely. Black <laughs> lives matter. Signs. <laughs> I believe in signs. Oh, my gosh. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.